Hello and welcome to today's Connecticut Women's Consortium webinar, Women's Leadership Experience. It's my pleasure to introduce your speakers for today, Alicia Davis and Stacey Watson. Alicia and Stacey are partners in a coaching firm, Transformative Leadership Strategies, and have been supporting and guiding women leaders for over 30 years. Alicia has a background in holistic health care and a specialization in working with nonprofit organizations. Stacy is licensed in marriage and family therapy and has extensive experience in working with leaders and organizational change initiatives. So ladies, if you're ready, the floor is all yours. Awesome. Thank you, Carly. Good morning, everyone. This is Alicia Davis. And I'm Stacy Watson. And welcome. We are so excited to be here today, to be here with the Women's Consortium and to be sharing with you about our women's leadership experience. So yeah. thanks for being here. Definitely. Yeah. So Stacey, you want to share a little bit about us? I mean, we got the background there, but we'll tell them a little bit more. Yeah. So as part of uh, Transformative Leadership Strategies, also known as TLS, um, both Alicia and I are certified professional coaches. And in that capacity, we do a lot of work with individual leaders as well as different organizations and teams. So we are always talking to people about leadership. And in fact, our passion at TLS is inspiring leaders to realize their fullest potential. So we're all about dynamic experiences. So we hope today's presentation will be both interesting and fun. And we welcome and encourage any questions or comments throughout. That's right. And so you can type as, type as fast as you want. We will keep up with you. And uh, we're just really uh, hoping that you'll be able to add, you know, we really want to hear your questions so that we can tailor this to your needs. Definitely. Right, Absolutely. And, you know, Stacy and I do a lot of videos together, so we'll be very interactive together. And we've got um, Kathleen and Shannon here from the Women's Consortium with us as well. Say hello, you guys. Hello, this is Shannon. Hi, everybody. This is Kathleen. Thanks for joining us today. Yeah, so uh, we'll hopefully have a lively discussion, even though we're Absolutely. kind of broadcasting out. That's right. Right? Absolutely. Great. So shall we uh, talk about what we're going to talk about? Yeah, today? let's get into it. All right. So here is your first question, everyone, that's on the call. So we're going to talk all about leadership today. Right? What it means to be a woman in leadership, what it means to be a woman in leadership in nonprofits and social services and behavioral health. And we really want to know how you define leadership. So if you would take a moment and in your Q&A, you want to, if you want to answer that question, That's how right. do you define leadership? And keep in mind, there's no right or wrong. You can look up leadership and find a million different definitions. So That's right. You have yours, and that'll be perfect. So. so we'll give you a few seconds to do that. So, Stace, while we're waiting, who's a leader that inspires you? Oh, gosh. Um, I um, I actually, this might be a little funny, but I really respect Oprah Winfrey. I just love how she uses her platform to um, promote um, sort of self-awareness and learning about who you are and how you can be your best self. Yeah. So that's a person that I really respect quite a bit. Awesome. Well, you, you definitely stole mine because I was just listening to her podcast today. And well, there she you was go. All right, so what do we have? So, Christina, leadership is knowing when to take charge and when to step back. Oh, yeah. That's an interesting balance, isn't it? It is, for sure. Yep. And Kathleen, a true leader makes themselves replaceable. Ooh. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, so really thinking about how am I helping the people on my team become their best leaders. That's I right. Love that. Um uh, Shanti or Shante, I, I don't know quite how to say it, being a role model, not afraid to go against the majority. Oh, and that can be hard. Yeah. Yeah. So role modeling, being able to take charge and step back, really being 
um, empowering other people yes. is really, I think, the, the themes that we're hearing here, which is awesome. So thank you, ladies, for contributing. So yeah. exactly. You know, and I think one of my uh, inspired leaders, we have many of them, right, Stace? So, so Oprah was one that comes to mind. But I think, you know, we work with a tremendous number of inspiring women. Yes. Right. And so we... We love quotes, and we put a couple of quotes in here from one of my, another one of my favorite leaders, Eleanor Roosevelt, and it really is about how being a good leader is about how you inspire, a good leader inspires people to have confidence in the leader. A great leader inspires people to have confidence in themselves. Yes. And today, we're talking about the women's leadership experience and a, a big component of this that we're going to talk more about in a little bit is about what does it mean to be a confident leader? Yeah, confidence right. is an interesting concept when you think about leadership. It sure is. And then, you know, we put a few more in here. So it's a, all exactly what you just what you just said is it's uh, John Maxwell. Leadership isn't about titles or positions or flowcharts. It's about one life influencing another. Leadership is unlocking people's potential to become better. Bill Bradley, a former senator in New Jersey. So we're about inspiring and influencing and potential. And then John Quincy Adams, right? If, you ins if, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, do more, and become more, you are a leader. Mm, I love that. Right. So leadership is there are so many aspects to it. Right. Stay. So, you know, we work with uh, organizations. We work with individual leaders. We work with teams. And really, we have a very, I think, um, broad definition of what a leader is. Right. We totally do. In fact, if you want to move to the next slide. So the thing to think about as you think about leadership is there's sort of two components. One is really learning about yourself and kind of becoming clear on who you feel like you are as your best leader. That's right. And then there's the action associated with that, right? So when we talk about leadership, we talk about inspiring and motivating yourself and others through a personal sense of purpose and vision. So really understanding who am I and then how can I take who I am and motivate and inspire the people around me? And the funny thing about leadership is you don't have to be in a particular spot on an org chart to be called a leader, right? Definitely so not. Any person in any role, whether they are a student in middle school or a college professor or a CEO, right? That's right. They're all leading. Well, we're all leading, we're all leading ourselves, right? Like we all have to get out and get out of bed. Right. Some days is are easier than others. Right. So we're how we're in, inspiring and motivating ourselves. And we all we all have families. We all have loved ones. We all have right all of the, the work that we do. So, you know, we are whether we have a title with air quotes around it, right, Stace, or not, we are leaders. We certainly are. And when we think about leadership, you know, we think about that knowing yourself and then the taking the action around that. And we also think about some elements of leadership. We're going to talk a little bit more about these in the next few minutes. So we're going to be talking about confidence. We've already touched on that. It's inevitable that the word confidence and the concept comes up when you think about leadership. That's right. But another concept that comes up quite often is balance. And I think with women, you really hear people talking about this, this idea of, I think sometimes we have this idea that there's this perfect balance out there and somebody else has it, but I don't. So yep. we'll talk more about that. Yeah, it's that whole myth of balance, That's right? True. We're going to redefine what does balance really mean? Exactly. And then last and certainly not least is this idea of finding your authentic voice, which really just means who am I as a leader? That's so right. it's right. an exciting journey to be on this it idea is. of leadership. It is indeed. It is indeed. So we're going to, so I think what we want to talk about next, Stace, is really just this idea, like, people often interchange terms, right? Absolutely. Leader, leading, managing, like, That's right. what is that all about? Well, it's funny because when you look at an org chart and org titles, manager gets assigned and leader typically doesn't, right? That's right. And I think that's, that's right. why people associate those two words in similar ways. But one of the ways that we like to think about leadership and the distinction between leading and managing is that 
you manage work, but you lead people. And so right. I think it's a really important difference. So what we have on the slide here, leaders manage work through leading people. And so what we're really focusing on when we're working with leaders is not so much the managing work, although we can provide support on that, but really what we're focusing on is how you lead people. That's right. Leading yourself, as you said, and then leading people. And on the slide, we just have, we won't read all of these, but we just have some kind of differences or ways that you can think about things differently. So the first one is, Establishing direction is being a leader, right? That's the big picture thinking. It's really creating a vision. It's helping people buy into that vision and getting people excited about that and putting the strategies and strategic initiatives around that vision. Managing might be more the sort of tactical pieces of that, right? What kind of plan do I need to have that vision happen? What kind of budget's required? Both components are important. We want people who are highly skilled in both of those things, but as you think about leading, that really is distinct from managing, right? Well, yeah, and I think it's also, I mean, part of it is about the ability to kind of deal with the day-to-day -day of what's in front of you, right? That's the management part. It's when you're kind of doing the task list and, you know, getting through the work and doing what you've got to do, right? And the leadership part is is more about how you're showing up and how you're bringing out the best in people and yeah. how you're empowering them yeah. to do their best work in a way that feels like they're of value. That's right. Right? Absolutely. And that's kind of like it's it's not necessarily either or. It's about having having the ability to do the 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 work that needs to be done in a way that is really uplifting and uh, energizing. Yeah, I remember back, it's been several decades ago actually, there was this concept that was very popular in the moment around followership. And it was this idea that people who are strong leaders create followers. And that means that people buy into what they have to say and buy into their vision and are excited to be on board and participating. And you can look at some you know, very well-known leaders and very well-known companies, and you'll often be able to read stories about those kinds of leaders. And I think that idea of aligning people we have on the slide, like that's easy to say, not always easy to do, especially in times of change or strife or challenge. Right. Um, at, and, you know, finding that way to align people is really a critical component of leadership. That's right. And I think a lot of what we're learning and um, or what we're hearing, I guess, would maybe even be another way to say it is, you know, as we're talking with HR directors or as we're working with organizations, we hear kind of this broader term around employee engagement, right? That's right. And engagement really is about how do you interact with people, and we know there's so much research on it, right? And you're a research nerd, Stacey. So I am you, a little bit. That's you right. Are, right. So there's so much research on how employee engagement is directly related to the people that are managing them. That's right. right? Absolutely. I think another way to think about engagement is connection. How connected am I to the organization and the mission of the organization? How connected am I to the person I report to? How connected connected am I to the top of the food chain in my organization? And when people feel disconnected from any of those, they will not be as engaged. That's right. So if you want to think about engagement in any organization, you can start by really looking at the managers that are leading. That's right. That's yeah, right. for sure. Great. Definitely. So we have, um, we have another question now. We have a poll question. So it's a little bit, the poll question is a little different. It's not an open-ended answer, right, Stace? So it's a little bit more like, a little kind of like leading the witness, right? So yep. we have a few planted, or not planted, but um, we have some answers. So the question, the poll question is, as a woman leader, so right now in whatever role you are in, what would you consider to be the biggest challenge that you face. And so we're gonna talk next about a survey that we did about a year and a half ago, Stace, or maybe not quite that long ago, but so what we, what we had were uh, a few different categories, right? So what we put up on the, I think you're gonna see the poll question, right, Kathleen, they're gonna see it? Yes. And, uh, the answers that they have there. Can yes. you can you actually read them? I off? will read them, and the answers are coming in right now. And they're uh, wow, as a lack of confidence, maintaining balance, being recognized as an equal, feeling isolated or on your own, 
minimal opportunity for personal development. Great. Oh, man, I love this. I love this, like, live polling. I know, right? Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So right now we've got... We've got 80% yeah. maintaining balance. Well, not surprising, right? That is not surprising. Yeah. And not. then 20% minimal opportunity for personal development. Mm, yeah. That can, that can go right hand in hand with maintaining balance, right? For if you're sure. feeling out of balance, it can be really hard to find time. For sure. Well, what's super interesting about this poll right now, Stace, is that this, so we're going to talk about the survey that we did next, right? Yeah, so this, this webinar is really about this framework of confidence, of leadership, right, and the women's experience, women's experience of leadership. We're going to talk about this survey that we did that really focused and honed in on this, and then we're going to talk about what we kind of developed to help support women that are having these challenges. Right? Absolutely. So thanks, everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much. And this answer, maintaining balance, is actually what we kind of expected to hear. That's right. When we originally did our survey, right? Well, let's talk about let's it. talk about our survey. Yeah. So we did this survey in the first quarter of 2018, and so it's still pretty recent. We had over 70 respondents, and the interesting thing about these folks was that they were at all levels within their organization. We had people who were business owners. We had people who were sort of what you would consider to be more middle management and everything in between. So it was a nice variety in terms of the different roles that people held. And when you look at where they came from in terms of where they worked or the organization that they were associated with, almost half of them were either in healthcare or the social services sort of environment. So I think very much consistent with the kind of audience that we often see at the Women's Consortium. Well, that's exactly right. So, you know, I've been in the co in, in coaching and training and team building for 30 plus years like you have, Stace, right? And you know, I've been I've been fortunate enough to be in the nonprofit world for 12 plus years, and I've done lots of work. I've been very very blessed to do lots of presentations and work through the Women's Consortium and in partnership with them. Right. So, a lot of the folks that were on my list that the survey went out to were probably folks that have come to workshops here, right, yeah. or that are in social services and behavioral health. And so, you know, I love that we had over 47 percent of our respondents really, you know, in this um, audience, just like the audience that we have today. Yeah. That so makes it really relevant for them. Right. Right. So, you know, we were very curious. We asked a lot of questions in the survey, some open-ended, some were more scaling questions where they answered a question on a scale of one to five or one to ten. And in the open-ended questions, we asked the question we just asked our group today, what is the issue that most challenges you? And so everyone responded. Sometimes people gave more than one response, and that was fine. And so being the data geek that I am, we did a big calculation around what those responses were, fully expecting our number one issue to be balanced. That's right. right. Exactly like what we saw here. But Which we was, are going to talk about. And it was number two. It was number two. But it wasn't number one. It wasn't. And so you ready for our big reveal? Yeah, we need uh, a you little ready? Wait, drum roll. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the number one, the number one challenge that women said that they faced in our survey was confidence. Yeah. When and we were really, uh, I mean, not that we were super shocked, but we were really surprised by that because we really did think that balance was going to be at the top of the chart. Yeah, and it was definitely up there. And it was a close, it was a close number two for yeah, sure. Yeah, the interesting thing about confidence was that it came out in different ways. So not everyone used that word. That's right. And it came out no matter, again, what level the person was. So people who were very high up in their organization from an org chart perspective, people who were more starting their careers, didn't matter. We saw this theme. That's right. Well, and I think it's also, you know, when you really kind of step back from it and think about it, it does kind of make perfect sense, right? Because no matter where you are, to stretch to the next, the next level or the next uh, growth possibility or the next iteration in your career takes, 
you know, it's change and it's challenge. And any time we have change or challenge or transition, it always brings up doubt. It's just the way we're hardwired as human beings, right? It's so true. And even if you're not looking to change, I think, and again, as women, we have a tendency to be really hard on ourselves. We just are. We're always looking at other people and comparing ourselves. As you always say, comparing our inside to their outside. That's right. right? So It's so not right. You know, it's just not an even comparison. It's not. But I think when we're doing that, you know, it can cause us to have a lot of self-doubt and our self-talk can be not very supportive. That's right. And I think, you know, they all these t- all tie together. And when you you're not feeling confident or not maybe feeling as empowered as you might, then it it may, you know, really influence the choices that you make around balance or around how you're focusing your time or your energy and what that means within the context of work, within the context of family, taking time for self, you know, how much, how, how present can you be for others, you know, all of that. It, I, I do think that it's all interconnected. They are certainly, you know, different, and we're going to actually talk about in a little bit, you know, some of the ways that we approach that in the women's leadership experience, right? Definitely. And I do think they're interconnected. So, you know, we had confidence as number one and balance as number two. So what did we have as number three, Stace? So the third one had to do with this idea of being um, recognized and equality, which can mean different things, of course, to different people. Right. I think it's just this idea that if I'm sitting in a meeting and I have a man sitting next to me in the meeting, that we both feel like our voices are equally heard, even though our voices might not sound the same, right? And the way that we might demonstrate our own confidence might not look the same, yet I know that I'm being seen and I'm being heard. So right. this idea of really feeling like you have a place at the table, you're welcome to be at the table, and that all voices are equally appreciated, I think that was a lot of what we heard from our yeah. women. And I think, you know, if we even get to some of the subtlety, which, you know, we can't really do in the survey, but in our conversations and as we're coaching, right, women in different roles, it's also sitting at the table with women, other women that may or may not be as self-aware, mm-hmm. right? So women that are just kind of assuming their um, maybe control, right? It's not so much empowering as maybe it's overpowering, right? So I think that part of it may be gender related, and I think part of it is also around self awareness and um, definitely, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. And so then we also had, we had our last ones. You want to just talk about our last ones there? Yeah, so I think that just community, this was a common one, and this probably is directly related to balance. I mean, being a mom myself, I know it is very difficult to feel connected to the community when you are trying to raise kids. I mean, you might be connected to the soccer field community, you know, right. or wherever you That's find right. yourself on a Saturday morning. But in terms of your own friendships, your own ability to cultivate those kinds of social and community connections that you may need, it can be really tough. It can be really tough. And so I think what we heard from women, especially your work working, you may be parenting or taking care of older parents, like whatever that might be, we're all kind of sandwiched a lot of us, right? Okay. So um, I think that was a piece. And then again, it's all connected, as you said, this idea of personal development, which I think we heard today on the survey, just finding the time and space to feel like I can improve, you know, I can feel like I can enhance myself in some way. That's right. You know, whether That's right participating in a leadership program or taking a workshop or getting a massage or whatever it might be, you know, finding ways to self-care. Right. can be tough. Coming to the Women's Consortium for for workshops and trainings. Yeah, I mean, everything matters. And so it's all, it's all, and all of these are interconnected, right? Yep, they are. A lot of the themes and things that we, um, you know, as we weave these together, you know, if you focus on one, all of the other ones also get boosted, right? right. Also elevating. That's right. That's right. So we're going to focus on confidence. And I think we really wanted to just share some of the actual words and the ways that we heard uh, women talking about confidence since this was our number one. Right. And this wordle we created using the actual language from people who responded to our survey, so you see all sorts of um, comments there, being fearful of failure, 
uh, being seen as a leader, how to be assertive without being considered bitchy. I've definitely heard that one. We hear I that one that all, one. The, all time, the time. All the time, absolutely. Right? Like this whole, and we are just, as women leaders, we are in a conundrum. Yeah. Right? Like if we're, if we're assertive, we're seen often as aggressive. Yeah. Right. Because this is the social stereotype. This is what we are dealing with in this society. Right. Of women not being equal. Right. right. So we are dealing with the stereotype of if we're assertive, if a if a if a man was assertive in the same way, it would be perfectly OK. Right. But when we're that way, we're looked at as bitchy or aggressive. Right. And if we're not assertive for whatever reason, then we're seen as, you know, weak or wimpy or right, that we should be. So it's like, it really is a catch-22, and I think it for women, it is so important to have a strong sense of self. Mm, it so is, yeah. It makes me think of uh, a client that we, we were working with a group, and we were talking about this idea of confidence, and one of the women at the um, in the group was newer in her career, and she was talking about sitting around a table and being the youngest person in the room. And feeling like, and she had been identified as, you know, high potential, talent, like there was every reason in the world for her to feel like she had the world by the right. tail, right? Yep. So yep. she was on the right path doing all the quote unquote right things. And yet she was sitting in that room feeling like, I'm not sure why I'm here. I don't know how to speak up. I'm not sure I'm going to have anything to contribute. These people know so much more than I do, right? right. So that's a real life example of how this idea of confidence can just stop you in your tracks. That's right. And she had a hard time speaking up, even if she had something to say, right? Yeah, she totally did. And, you know, I think it also, um, you know, it shows up in, um, you know, what what um, they were saying here, you know, how do I become more confident and spontaneous mm. as a speaker, right? So confidence also allows us, like, to to plan ahead, but it also allows us to, in the moment, Right. Whether it's something that feels really supportive or something that you have to deal with that feels like a conflict, like unwanted or uninvited physical contact. Right. So in confidence, in that moment, you're able to say that's not OK. Right. Or to step back in a way that you're maintaining your own self and your own presence. And and, you know, it's also when when you have the opportunity, you know, when when you see a, a workshop you know, offering or you, your boss says, you know, I really want you to do that, that presentation to the team next, you know, next week. And you've never done it before. And normally you would freak out and maybe you're still freaking out, but you say yes anyway. That's right. right? So there's the growth opportunity. So, you know, I think confidence and even, you know, we could even just kind of, um, talk about we have a, a, a CEO forum that we run, right? Yeah. So we're talking about, right, you just gave an example of women that are starting in their career, right? So of course, right. And, you know, go all the way to the other end of the spectrum. You've got CEOs or, you know, women that are in high leadership positions, and it can be kind of lonely up there. That's right. Right, because you are responsible for so much, Right. So to be able to kind of process and talk through and figure out really important decisions, you have kind of a small group of of people to to trust in doing that. That's right. right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So when we when we talk about confidence, it can show up in so many different ways. That's right. Absolutely. And it's a really complicated concept. And we'll talk a little bit more about how at TLS we've taken kind of a stab at trying to understand confidence maybe a little bit differently. That's right. But before we move on to that, we wanted to just touch on a couple of other concepts or topics. We've talked a little bit about these. Um, one has to do with this sense of community, which I talked about before. I think the, the piece I want to just highlight here is having that sense of community with other women leaders. And I think that's something I know when I had a corporate career, I was always very conscious of trying to connect with newer in career women because I felt like it was super important for those women to feel like they had an advocate in yep. their corner. Yes. And I think it's important for all of us, whatever our role is, to be thinking about who are the important women in my life and how can I add to that and how can I enhance them their lives and how do they enhance mine. So yeah. 
There's nothing more powerful than a group full of women. I mean, if there is nothing more powerful part of a group of women, you know that. But it is easy to lose that connection again with life. Yeah. So it's just a, and we heard that from the people taking the survey. Well, and I think what you just said is really important. I mean, when I think back to the beginning of my career in engineering of all places, right? Computer science and engineering, and so. You know, in that environment, I'm I'm you know mid twenties, and I I don't really know what I'm doing. You know, I'm I think I do, but I don't really. You know, it's like what happens in your twenties, right? And the amazing thing for me was this was you know 35, 40 years ago, which also scares me to kind of say that. Well, maybe not quite that long, but anyway, there was an internal organization. It was an internal women's network, and the women that were there took me under their wing and mentored me and guided me and 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 that was so amazing to me like I think there are so many things that I learned at that time from those women about how to really listen or how to facilitate or how to literally how to be present for myself and how to really speak up like I I just want to really encourage all the women on this call to just really think about whether it's with us, whether it's in their own communities, whether it's with the Women's Consortium, whoever it's with, that there is an incredible power in having those connections with other women leaders, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Um, Yeah, so I think we talked about this idea of being assertive and aggressive, and then, again, just what you just said, Alicia, which is just being able to advocate for yourself and finding your voice, I think, is really powerful. That's right. That's right. So let's talk about our program. Yeah, so let's let's, – actually, would it be okay to pause for a minute? Yeah. So I would love, you know, we've just been kind of talking on, and as you can tell, we probably could do this all day, right? So, but I would just love to know, you know, if anybody out there has questions, right, or thoughts, or, thoughts or anything that you'd like to share, if you want to type them into the Q&A section, that would be awesome. And, yeah. and Kathleen, you're over here, like, shaking your head a lot and smiling, <laughs> and she's over here, like, smiling, so... You know, I would love to hear from either one of you, you know, any of your thoughts or input or yeah, anything any of these what themes that resonate. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> this is Kathleen, and, and I could surely talk all day, too. So <laughs> I will not, but I did not know that you were an engineer. I was a computer engineer for 25 years, and I had a different experience. Um, it was positive for me, but there were no women. I worked in radar, radar um, aviation software, and it was all men. And all the other women, the few women I worked with were um, timid and didn't want to go into the labs and be around the men. They felt um, they were not confident. Yeah. I grew up with three older brothers and I was, you know, blessed with this feeling that I can do anything I wanted, but I didn't do it as being true to myself. I was, I was like one of the guys and I pushed my way through and I, I bulldozed. There was no women to help me and I took their power over versus power uh-huh. with. Yes. So I was going to be better than the guys, and I was going to show them how smart I was instead of this collaborative kind of environment. And if I had had earlier women in the field with me, I think, it, well, I know it would have changed things for me. So I was always like, oh, I did so great, but it was me. I did so great instead of yes. a team that supported me. And I, I didn't learn or grow from that experience at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I did my job. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't learn from the experience. So, um well, you know, I think it's just, it's every situation, I mean, whether you know that you learned or grew from it or not, you did, right? I mean, you le- if nothing else, you learned that that was um, maybe, you know, farther on, not the way that you wanted to be, right? And that you evolved into something different. So that was just, that could be just as powerful, right? Mm, definitely. Great. Okay, so I don't see any other questions or thoughts coming in, right? So shall we just kind of carry on, Stace? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yes, let's talk about, so so the women's leadership experience. So we really came up with this program because, one, because we have been in communities of women for really our entire lives in different ways. Oh, wait, wait, I'm going to pause. So, um Christina, I too was in engineering, and my first week on the job, I showed a male coworker how to complete a task. And when our manager asked him about it, he replied with, "Oh, Chrissy and I put our heads together and figured it out." Mm-hmm. Yeah, something like this never happened again, really. But it was hard to face. Of course, 
Oh my gosh. Else taking, taking ownership of your idea. Yeah. I literally, Christy was just, or Christina was just talking to a client two weeks ago who had a, this exact story or it's something so similar. This just happens all the time. Just, wow, great idea. I think I'll take it as my own. Yeah. 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 Well, I am glad that it never happened again, Christina, and um, thank you for sharing with us. Yeah, uh, definitely. It's so interesting, right, the, the being in the trades, you know, in engineering and especially, you know, earlier in, in our women's history of leadership, right? It was just, I mean, in the engineering company that I was in, the women would go to the job sites and there was no porta potties for them. Right. It was just all the guys and, you know, all the cat calls and all the sexual harassment and all of that. So, I mean, I think we have come a long way. And yet, right, right we still always need to take responsibility for our own empowerment mm -hmm. and for who we surround ourselves by. Right. And how we put ourselves in situations where we are growing in ways that are supportive. And that's really why we created the Women's Leadership Experience, and we named it very specifically because we want it to be women, right? We both have had many, many, both personal and professional circles of women that we have been so blessed to have. And, you know, both of our backgrounds is very much about making things experiential. So for me, so just a, um, a little side note, I went from computer science engineering into the world of holistic healthcare and massage therapy. So those are two completely opposite ends of the yep, spectrum. 180. 180. And I got there because I had an awareness about myself that I was really sick. Intern like I was internalizing a lot of my stress and I didn't even have language. I didn't know about it. And I went on this personal kind of journey or quest, if you will, to figure out who I was and how to get better. And you know, I think all along the way, it's all about the experiences that we have. And then, then I became a teacher and a facilitator. And it's really creating experiences for people to have their own insights and their own awarenesses. So what we have created in, in you know, for our, ourselves, because we practice this, as well as for the women in the organizations and the teams that we work with, is... We want to have a, an experience that's really unique that women can be themselves in wherever and whoever they are and that they are really able to tap into um, their own insights to really vision for themselves who they want to be as a leader, who they can become, you know, maybe again, we we get caught up in the day to day to day to day, right? So sometimes it's hard for us to just even take a pause, right, and step back and think, well, where am I going? Exactly. Right? Why am I doing this? What do I want to be doing, right? Yes. And so, um, and it's so it's just so interesting that you just were talking about Oprah because you know I love listening to Oprah and her um, Super Soul Sunday podcast, and she was just talking about one of the best pieces of info. Or, um, um, advice? Advice, thank you, that she ever got was from the first station manager that hired her, and he said, we want you to just be yourself. And what she, and she was going up against Phil Donahue on national television, and, he, and the station manager was like, no, we just want you to be yourself. And so this idea of how can we be ourselves and and really step into what's important to us, to our values, who we want to be with, Right? What organizations do we want to be supporting? What people do we want to be leading? Or what people do we want to be influencing? Right? So we really wanted to create this experience. It was a combination of some skill building, but really more coaching. Mm -hmm. And then also really just about how do we create an, uh, a community? Yes. Right? Because we're just talking about how community is so critical and important. Yes. And so what we wanted to build into our women's leadership experience was kind of this combination of um, activities and practices and really not just sitting and thinking about stuff either, right? Not just sitting and reflecting, but literally then figuring out, okay, how can I put this into action for myself? That's right. And how will I can show up for myself and then be accountable and actually do it? And so that's what we really created. And we wanted to do it. We know, and again, since balance, you know, is right up there as an issue for women, 
how do we how do we create a program that's comprehensive enough that women can women leaders can really get something of value and meaning from it and at the same time right fit it into fit it into their schedules right exactly right so flexibility flexibility is huge right yeah, so that's that's what we created we created this women's leadership experience and we've actually um, had the opportunity to share this in in uh, an organization that was uh, a healthcare organization, but it was focused on young young leaders in IT. Mm -hmm. And now we're um, partnering with the Women's Consortium to be able to bring this to the women leaders in the community of social services and behavioral health and the nonprofits that and all of the organizations that the Women's Consortium serves. So we are again, we are beyond thrilled to be able to be talking about this on this webinar with Kathleen and Shannon and everyone else. Absolutely. Right? Absolutely. So anything else you want to add to our, you know, kind of why we created it and then we're no. going to talk about what, you know, what what it's helping to solve for, right? Yeah, yeah, no, nothing else. I mean, I think we sort of touched on all of the reasons we thought that there was a need for something like the women's leadership experience. Yeah, right? great. So, so, so we're going to, so let's talk about, yeah, so, you know, we've talked about what we heard in terms of our survey and some of the challenges and pain points there, and right. we sort of took those and translated them into um, you know, in a more specific way, why would anyone be interested in doing something like this? I mean, we are all busy and we do all have a lot of commitments. That's so, right. you know, what are the reasons or what are those pain points or challenges that can really prompt someone to say, you know, having this additional support or learning some of these new skills or thinking about myself, you know, giving myself permission to really think about myself for specific periods yeah. of time might be a good response or a good next step. And so, you know, one of the things had to do with having your authority or credibility challenged. And again, we talked a little bit about it, you know, in terms of how do you maintain your own integrity and who you are in an environment where you feel like you're not really seen as equal. That's right. And that your credibility is being questioned, maybe because you're a woman or a woman of color or whatever it might be. You know, there's so many different reasons that people can experience that. And then in response, you can try to be aggressive or assertive, and then you're called aggressive or bitchy. So again, we talked a little bit about that as well. And then I think a lot of what we end up hearing from women is, how do I, first of all, find my voice, and then how do I use my voice? Mm -hmm. And how do I use my voice in a way that's appropriate for me? Because I always say, Kathleen and I could be sitting in a class together, the professor could ask a question, she might raise her hand to answer it, and I might not. It doesn't mean that I'm not confident, right? Mm -hmm. I might know the answer and just be perfectly com comfortable letting Kathleen be the person that answers it. That's right. So what we like to say is, you know, confidence and being able to use your voice is saying something when you feel like you have something you want to say. Right. And that's really the distinction, and that can be and look different for every woman. And what we are hearing and what we continue to hear from our clients is that's hard. That can be really hard sometimes is yep. finding that. Well, and it's also like in that moment, right, Stace? Like sometimes it's super hard. Like you, you, you think about the absolute perfect thing that you could have said, right? You walk out of the room or five yeah. minutes later, and then you're like, oh, darn, like I why know. didn't I think I about that then, right? There. Yes, yes. Right. Definitely. So part of what we kind of have woven into this is some practices around being able to stay present even in really challenging situations, right? That's because right. We all are in these challenging situations. Yeah, all the time. And then at the beginning you sort of touched on this, but, you know, another theme that we hear a lot, in fact, we were writing about it in our newsletter this week, is uh, the theme of transition. We are talking to a lot of people right. that are in the midst of transition, whether they're transitioning from the career they've had to maybe one they'd like to start, or just moving from one position to another within the same organization, transition can be challenging and it's difficult sometimes when you're going into something that's slightly new or very new yep. to know how to feel confident. So, or even competent, right? Like, am I going to be able to do that? So I think, you know, again, we've touched on some of these that were themes that came out in the survey and just really wanting to recognize these are real world issues that people are dealing with and thinking about on a regular basis. That's right. And I just love, I had actually, so I, um, uh, I always begin my year with words and intentions, and so I actually, this um, little graphic on the left here, speak the truth, 
even if your voice shakes. I love that. I had that on my intention board last year, and I just I just love that because that's part of it, right? You gotta you gotta speak it. Sometimes you have to speak it. And then the confidence comes. That's right. And often you think it's shaking, but the people out there don't even hear that. That's thing. exactly right. So, That's all right. Exactly so, Alicia, right. we've talked a lot about what the challenges are. Oh, right? yeah. We're all feeling a little heavy right now okay. because it's like, wow, how do we even get out of bed with all these challenges? <laughs> right? How in the world do we stay motivated? <laughs> exactly. Right. So, so if you do the WLE, what do you think could happen? Well, so here's the thing I'm just going to invite everybody to do right now, because this is part of what we do, is to literally we're just going to pause for 10 seconds, okay? Everybody just feel your feet on the floor, feel your butt in the chair, and just pause. Like literally, I want you to just bring your attention to your breath and just notice that you're breathing in and out. Just pause for one or two moments, just maybe three breaths. Just notice that you're, notice how far down into your body your breath goes. Just notice what it feels like to release on the exhale. Let's do it one more, one more moment. Right, and then what I want you to do is I just want you to notice in that moment, right? Because really all the moments that we have are just right now, right? But in that moment, what did you become aware of? So I'm curious, Stace, just in that moment, because you didn't know I was going to do that right then, right? Oh. So in that moment, just as you were sitting and being aware and breathing, what, what was any insight that you had? Well, I was really aware that talking about all these challenges, I really was feeling stress. Yes. Just talking about those experiences, having experienced them myself and then supporting clients as a coach or as a team facilitator, you know, and yeah. so it was nice because I felt like literally I was just clearing some of that out of my energy. Great. So yeah. great. So thanks for doing that, partner. Yeah, you're welcome, partner. <laughs> yeah. Kathleen, I'm curious, what were you just in that moment of presence? What were you aware of? I was I, I was reminded, as I always am, uh, how grateful I am where I work. Uh -huh. I had yeah. my eyes closed and I was breathing in and I really love working where I work and I have in the last six months put myself in positions that I'm uncomfortable with because I know to have my voice heard the way I want to have it heard I have to do some things mm -hmm. so I have been challenging yeah. myself and um, uh, I still hear my voice shake but I've been told it doesn't and I'm yeah. thinking uh -huh. of that also uh -huh. yeah. yeah great Shannon, how about you? Do you would you well, share I something? I second a little bit about what Kathleen just said, but I noticed I was holding my shoulders up when we did that, and so that reminded me to put them down. Yes. And just sort of not hold that there. Yeah. So that was really helpful. Great. Yeah. yeah so I think. And look, we have Christina. Oh, love mindfulness. Oh, Christina, I love you. <laughs> I can just can I just say that I just love you. Um, so you know this is really so when we talk about the benefits of this program. Right. For me, you know, I think one of the biggest benefits is to become more present and more self-aware. And we as coaches, whether it's this program or anything else that we're doing, that's what we're always striving to support yeah. anyone in. And certainly, you know, our passion is supporting women and women leaders. Right. So. What I was noticing from doing, wanting to do that pause was to just kind of slow down and sink in a little bit because I could actually feel that I was getting a little bit fast and I was getting a little bit more in my head. And I wanted to slow down and just reconnect with my heart mm -hmm. and reconnect with the feeling of all of this, right? And, and part of what we do in the women's leadership experience is just that, yeah. right? It really, because to be a whole leader or a whole person, you need to be able to do that. You need to be able to really kind of connect in with what you're thinking, which is part of the visioning, which is part of goal setting, which is part of setting intention. And, and it's also about feeling into things. Like Kathleen was just saying, well, this, you know, where I've been doesn't feel quite right. Well, what does it feel like? Like what, what does stress feel like to you or to, you know, Stacy to you or, Kathleen, to you, or Shannon, you know, noticing shoulders, it feels different for all of us, 
right? And so part of what we're doing in the women's leadership experience is, yes, Christina, it is infused with mindfulness practices, and we're going to talk a little bit more about that, but really mindfulness is how can we be present in this moment to ourselves, to the world around us, through our all of our senses, and how do we cultivate non-judgment? And, and the non-judgment part is a really critical part because that is the part of our brains that when we're stretching, right, when we're in transition, when we're in change, when we're assuming a new role, when we're, when we're trying to take time for ourselves and our partners or our family is saying, no, you can't do that, we need you, right, it's, it's being able to continue to connect inside of yourself and decide in that moment, what do I need for me, how can I be my best self so that I can show up and be my best self for those around me. You know, Alicia, I'm just sitting here thinking, if everyone who's participating on this call or listening to this call later just took a nanosecond and thought of just the first really amazing leader that comes to mind, Ooh. whoever that might be, just yeah. everyone take just a second. Ooh, yeah. Everyone got one? I got one. Okay. So I'm going to say some things and I'm going to just sit. I'll check in the room because we can't see everyone on the line, but I'll check in the room. Does that person uh, know who they are? Is that your experience of them? They yes. know who they are? Yes. Are they able to sort of be who they are even in times of challenge? Yes. Right? Are they connected and you sort of get this feeling that they're grounded right to the, right to the earth? Mm -hmm. Right? So I think as we think yes. about being a part of this program, that's what we're really trying to cultivate. Because every single person, if we went around, I bet no one named the same person in their head, but those qualities, that's, we, we, we know it when we see it, right? We that's know right. it when we feel it with people. That's right. And, and that feeling, we often diminish the feeling part of ourselves, and I think that and especially as women, I think that is a, it's one of our superpowers. It is. That we can, re we really know how to tap into feeling and how to tap into care and how to tap into um, awareness. And so I think that, you know, part of what we're creating here in this program is to really empower women to do that in, for themselves with each other creating those strong interpersonal connections. And then, of course, what is that going to lead to? That's going to lead to them, you know, we put um, developing executive presence, right? So, again, you know, we hear that term, but what does that really mean? Well, if you're present inside of yourself, if you're aware of what you're thinking or what you're feeling or how you're sitting or how you're standing, right, you, other people see that, right? That's what you were talking about, Stay. So that internal presence leads to external presence. Yes. And then we draw people to us. Like a magnet. Right? Like a the magnet. The craziest thing. Absolutely. That's why those people always have flocks of people around them. That's right. You know, it's just... It's the way that people respond. That's right. And so, yeah. so that is really what we are wanting. We want to have, create that kind of experience and support and environment for women leaders to really be able to overcome whatever fear is there, whatever challenge they're facing, whatever, um, you know, whatever those we call, I call it the itty bitty shitty committee, right? <laughs> the, the gremlin talk, the self judgment, right? Because that often is our worst enemy mm. in the sense of that can be our biggest block. Yeah. And so we weave a lot of that into this experience too. And so it's really about by really um, amping up our internal power and strength and courage and core and, co and confidence how you can be your best self. Yeah. So that's really our vision for this program, right? That's they, right, absolutely. And then, of course, the interpersonal uh, connections, right? And absolutely. With others. And then, of course, that benefits the organization. Yeah, right? So if you want to flip, Kathleen, the, um, you know, if you become all those things we just described, right, and if everyone on your team were to become all those things that we just described, 
can you imagine the power of the organization? And that's really one of the things that, especially when we're either working with people within organizations or even as people are making the case to their organization for why they should be participating in yes. a program like this, right? Whether it's the time or the funding or whatever it might be, there's really value that the organization realizes immediately. If your employees have greater senses of confidence, right? They're showing up in a different way. Um, they're bringing skills and strategies that they're learning and incorporating and they're both modeling and sharing proactively with the people around them, things that are helping them feel more confident, look more confident, find that sense of balance, all of those things. And that's just an absolute plus and benefit to the organization. That's right. So it's, um, it, it is an easy line to draw between building ourselves personally and professionally, and then building the organization. That's right, because if you circle back to what you said a little while ago when we were talking about employee engagement, right, and you said it's all about connection, yes. right, creating those strong connections. So when you, when you are having that experience for yourself, Yes. then you can create that experience for others. And when we do, you know, when we talk a lot about we work with direct care staff often or managers in, in um, organizations, and we often use the analogy or the metaphor of putting on your oxygen mask, right? So the putting on the oxygen mask is, you know, right, if you've ever been on an airplane, and I don't even know how many of us watch that public service announcement anymore, but, right, when the oxygen mask comes down, right, who are you supposed to put it on first? Yourself. Yourself. And you would be really surprised at how many times I hear people say on the other person. But it's, you're supposed to put it on yourself because if you're passed out, right, or if you're dead, <laughs> you're not really any good to anybody, yourself or anyone else. And I think that's a really powerful metaphor for women, for women in social services, in yes. mission-centered organizations, right, in how they are leading. You're to, this is also an opportunity to come and be filled up. Yeah. Right? To come at, so whatever, whatever level you're at in the organization, you can bring that back so that you can uplift the people that you are with, right? You can then help to put the oxygen mask on for them. Because the other thing that we do in this program a lot, says is everything is um, usable, Right, like we're going to do, ex and we're going to actually, we're going to talk about that yeah. next, right? But everything that we do, women can take back to their teams and actually do some of that with their teams. So they're not just modeling it, but there's actually tools and skill building that we can act, that they can actually take back. Yeah, right. definitely. Absolutely. So should we talk about that? Yeah. Should we talk about the program? Tell us a little bit about the different parts of the program. Well, we have, we really wanted to create this program as multidimensional, right? And of course, because our background is as, coach, as coaches and as facilitators, again, we wanted this to make this experience very unique and very different from other quote unquote training programs, right? right. And that's really part of who we are at TLS, right? We are always about making it very inside out kind of learning mm -hmm. and very much uh, applied, right? Because we are all adult learners, right? And we all have to take whatever the concept is, whatever the skill is, whatever the practice is, and literally take action and put it into place and see how it works as immediately as possible, right? So, so we created the Women's Leadership Experience as a group coaching experience, as a group coaching model. So everybody is together, and we're, you know, in the process right now of figuring out, you know, that might look like we're all together in one room. It might look like we're all together on a uh, Zoom call or a video call. technology. Right, which would be a little different than what we're doing today because this is a one-sided conversation, right? But this is... Actually, can you have a one-sided conversation? I don't think so. <laughs> so anyway, so we would have it in some way a, a platform that where there's a video, right, so that everybody could see everybody. So we're still kind of figuring out the details of that, but it's the idea that it's in a group setting and so that we'll have group learning and we'll also have individual coaching. So. So we'll have learning and everybody, you know, in a group will be will be coaching them and supporting them yeah. and having the insights and applying them. And then 
what we're and we're going to do this over a span of time, right? And right. we're right now we're kind of playing around with the idea of maybe a six month, maybe an eight month, and we might even do a little mini survey of folks that are on the call here or folks kind of on our list just to kind of get a sense of what would work best for their schedules, right? Because that's part of what we're trying to figure out, right? We want to make this really um, e as easy as possible to fit into everyday life, right? And we also know that, that learning and implementation happens over time, right? So we need to, we need to um, think about for, for the applied learning part of it, individuals, right? We're also going to be talking one-on-one -on -one with them. Right? Yeah, and I think that is a component of the program that is a bit unique to other leadership programs. I mean, there are lots of leadership programs, and I'm sure there's value. And there are awesome problems. Oh, my right? gosh, yeah, totally. Lots to learn, different models, different ways of looking at things. I think what we're trying to do in this one is take what we're learning as a group and all the concepts and theories and strategies and conversation and then in a one-on-one -on -one coaching environment really talk about how is that working for me in real life that's right you know so we're talking about this idea of speaking up i really failed at that last week so help me feel okay about that right so it's that and sometimes in these individual coaching sessions it's not really always just about what we're talking about in the group right i mean people are leading their lives and there may be issues going on at work that even in the group setting, they're not really wanting to talk about. But in an individual coaching session, it can come up That's because right. it's safe and there's confidentiality and all of those things. And so right. I think the individual coaching piece, what we're hearing from group participants that we've had is that's a really important component of this. Really, really powerful component, yeah. right? Because, again, they can cut. It's, this is really where we help to customize. I mean, we're customizing the whole program, and this is really where, you know, we're talking one-on-one, -on -one and we can help solve challenge, you know, help them think through or solve challenges or ways that, um, you know, they uh, things that they're coming up against, and it's also just helping to elevate the participants in whatever's, whatever the successes are and celebrating those, because another habit that we have as women, right, is that we often don't take the time to just stop and celebrate our wins, no. our successes, no, our amazingness, no. right? Yeah, we think about the five things we didn't do, didn't get done, didn't go well, and we don't think about the hundred things that we got done in the day, right? That's right. Yeah, just, That's right. Absolutely. So, so a lot of this is also about really celebrating the success, mm -hmm. right? And so again, this is, and this is from my, you know, um, and Stacy, you too, but from teaching in an adult learning environment for 20 plus years, we created what is something unique to us, which we call experience sheets. Yeah. Other people might call them worksheets, but really what we do is we take whatever the concepts are, and we're going to actually talk about the topics, and we're going to do it just a little bit on each one of these. But whatever the topic is, we have an activity, we have a skill building, and then we have an activity, and we have a go out and take this back to your team, back to your world, in your home, you know, with your family, whoever, with your friends, it doesn't matter who. And then you're going to kind of journal about it or document it. Or practice way. it. Or practice it. Right. right. And then, and again, this is all, it's all, this is all, um, learning in the way that you want to so you can do it or not do it but we'll have these kind of sheets and guidelines that you can follow to really put this into play yeah and it can really reinforce i mean one of the things that i always am aware of for myself you know if you want to start a new habit you have to do it like 30 times yep so these sheets are just one way to really start to practice whatever the new things are that you may want to try to do. That's right. Differently, right? That's right. right. And we also created uh, an online learning portal, right? Really simple yeah, and very intuitive. Very intuitive. And it's just one place where all the materials are, right? right. Where we're going to, as we do these, we'll have videos. And I'm sure Kathleen is probably going to help us with this technology <laughs> if we're here at the Women's Consortium or otherwise. <laughs> Um, you know, virtual that will have, so it's a place where all the materials are, where That's all right. the PowerPoint slides are, where all of the videos are, resources. where all the resources are, where the experience sheets are. And in addition to that, we again want to reinforce that community. And Facebook is an easy way to do that. We actually haven't been a, we didn't incorporate that into the online learning portal. So whether it's a Facebook group or maybe a, a 
private email, whatever. But there's we want to create that community. And then we also want to have uh, access to us, Stacia, yeah, right? so that definitely. email connections and Q&A in between times. Without a doubt, yeah. It's very important for everyone to feel connected to themselves, each other, and to us. That's right. That's yeah, right. Definitely. So, you know, I guess we just, uh, you know, we're, I think we're doing great here. Where it's a little after 10, and, you know, we can probably wrap up in the next 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, for so, sure. Unless there's other questions. But just to, we wanted to just kind of give this overall framework and then just we want to just spend a moment right on each of kind of our three main themes within the women's leadership experience. So whether it's over the six months or eight months or whatever we decide is the right amount of time, right? These are the key themes that we're going to talk about. Yeah, so we touched on confidence from the very beginning because, as we mentioned, this was a theme that we hear, you know, we heard through our survey and we hear over and over again coming up in different ways. And because confidence is so complicated and it does look different between person to person to person, you know, I think you and I felt like there's a lot of information out there about confidence. Yep. We read a lot of books and did our own research. There were kernels from a lot of those different places that felt really applicable to the work we do. And we felt like it was n not one thing was quite thorough enough. Right. And so we decided to create our own model. We do that a lot. We do that a lot. Come up with yes, something new. Exactly. Maybe we just like doing it our way. I don't know. That could be very true. We, uh, we created a model um, where we look at confidence through eight different elements. That's right. And um, we start with uh, core values, which is really from the very beginning, participants have an opportunity to dig a little bit inside of themselves and really connect or reconnect yes. with the things that are most important important to them, those values that they hold most dear. That's right. And from that point, then everything builds. And so we have these eight elements. And really, the whole point of this component of the program is developing a sense of self-awareness, uh, growing your sense of self-awareness, and continuing to build on the things that we all do that are super successful and really helping us feel confident, and then where we feel like we may be lacking, developing some new strategies or techniques to really help with that, yep. and really relying on the group and our coach in that whole journey so that as we're trying new things on, practicing new things, maybe I'm speaking up and it's a little scary or uncomfortable, how can I get support from my peers, from my coach while I'm trying that just to see how that goes? That's right. Well, and even, you know, in thinking about, again, if we go back to, um, you know, folks that have been, you know, either in our program, you know, in the past, it's also really celebrating those wins. Yes, we right? do a lot of that. Yeah. So it's really like thinking about, okay, so I did, I did take, you know, um, I did take a moment in the beginning of a presentation and I just paused and I breathed and then I was able to speak really clearly and I was able to really feel like, I, and I got to say, I really want a cape like this little girl I has. Know, like, right? I really want, can we maybe give outfits like this? I know, <laughs> right. Exactly. So, and just to, just to reinforce, right, again, everything that we're doing in this confidence model is about internal growth and awareness and external action. That's right. right? It's always because confidence is about action, action, action. How am I being while I'm doing That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. And you got to be doing the doing. You got to do the doing. Exactly. So what's the next topic? Well, of course it's balance. Yeah. Right? And then and you that's know That's what to, we heard today. That's right. To everybody that's on the call that, you know, eighty percent said balance, yes. Yes, yes, and yes. And balance, you know, as I've been doing this, so I've been teaching mindfulness for, you know, twenty plus years and and helping women and leaders of all kinds, you know, practice. What does that mean? I've actually really found um, I, I created a different definition for myself because I think people see balance often. There's a myth about it in the sense of we're supposed to just have it. We're supposed to create it, and it's a static state, and it means that every we're juggling everything the way that we're supposed to, Perfectly. right? Perfectly. No balls drop. No no plates go crashing on the floor, right? Like, and and we also. Um, I think, have these assumptions that we're supposed to be doing it all in all aspects of life, right? And the, and the myth of that is that that is completely unrealistic. Yes. And what happens is as we develop the ability to be more mindful and to be more present, that 
and, and to really do that deeper dive into our values, we begin to really understand what is most important for us in this moment, right? right and yeah. what's important in, you know, somebody's life in their 20s or 30s can look very different than when they're in their 40s or in 50s or in 60s, right? In any time of life. So, so balance is more about really understanding what is most important to me right now and where do I want to invest my time and my energy? And so it might mean that, you know, in a, in some, it, so it might mean some days you're doing more work or spending more time at work or developing leadership skills, for example, right? It might mean, okay, I'm really, I'm really holding a hard line and I'm leaving it three o'clock to go see my kid's soccer game. That's right. Right? Or it might mean I'm really going to hold steady with my partner because I want to go away for a, a two-day retreat somewhere, yeah. right? right? Or I want to talk to my boss about coming to the women's leadership experience at the women's consortium, right? Whatever it is. But it's more about, um, and when you're in those moments, when you do make that choice that you're actually in the experience of hanging with your kids, you're not checking your, your phone, right? right? You're not on the on the phone or distracted, right? Because quality is more important than quantity. Absolutely. All the research shows that. All of it shows that. So yeah. part of what we're going to really do in this balance part is to really do that deeper experience and, and um, practice around mindfulness and what does that mean and how to get more, claim more time in the sense of we'll only have 24 hours, but when we're really present, time can feel very expansive. Yeah, so we're really okay. going to explore what that what that means in terms of balance. Yeah, absolutely. So the final component of the WLE has to do with this really broad topic which is called authentic leadership. And again, we did a lot of research on the topic of leadership. We started out talking about leadership and all the different definitions and all the different ways that you can think about leadership. And we decided we needed to create our own model. Yep. So but you might be seeing it again. <laughs> and so what we did was we thought about what are some of the basic elements of leadership that when they are all in place, this is the kind of person that you would likely look at and say, wow, that is a leader. And would that person feel themselves like a leader? So it starts off, again, knowing yourself and your values, right? So that's a piece that is fundamental to all the work we do at TLS. Right. But then there's this whole question of how do you establish direction and how do you align people? So we talk a lot in this section about all of those components. Some people will find that they have a really easy time establishing direction, but it's the motivating and inspiring that they struggle with. Right. Or maybe they are great motivators, but they're not necessarily sure on how to establish direction. And both are okay, right? We're not all good at everything. That's and right. we don't feel strong in all of those components. So this whole practice is a way to just learn more and to decide where you want to focus. That's right. And, you know, across the board, it doesn't matter what organization we're in, what team we're working with. With, whether it's you know IT and corporate, whether it's women in nonprofits, manufacturing, it manufacturing, it doesn't matter. What we always hear is we could communicate better. Yes, that's right across the board. Issue. Communication yes. is always right up Which there. Is why we put it right in the middle, right in the middle. Yeah. So we're going to really and again, and I know I, I kind of sound a little bit like a broken record, but it always comes back to mindfulness in the sense of when you're having authentic and intentional communication, you're paying attention. That's right. Like you're, you're right there. You're really listening, yes. right? You're taking in as much or even you're taking in more often than what you're speaking. So that's really, we're, we're going to play around and just really explore what does that kind of authentic and intentional communication look like? Yes, definitely. Right. All right, so, so we're, we're starting to wrap up. Yeah, we're right here at the end. We are. So we've got just a couple of last slides because we figured we're hoping, I mean, right, we are just hoping that all of you on the call or anybody that, you know, listens to this afterwards or that we share this with is inspired by yeah. this, right, and wants to know more. And we thought, you know, this is kind of a new concept. We've never partnered with the Women's Consortium no. in this way before, right? right? So we wanted to kind of do this step by step, right? So the webinar, this is our first, this is our first um, step, step. Yeah. right? 
So it's all about taking action, right? So we try to practice what we preach. And so the launch of the program, so first of all, you see here in capital letters, exclamation points, this is going to be a cohort of women. And maybe it's one cohort, maybe it's multiple cohorts. We're, we're going to see how much interest there is. And um, what was super interesting, we went to launch a women's leadership experience at this other organization that we went to. And you know what was so interesting, Stace? Yeah. Tell them. Tell well, them. So then we had several men that raised their hand and said, we want to participate. Right. And so, at the, and this was like in the 11th hour. And yeah. We were like, okay, we could do that. Sure. And it was fine. And it was fine. And we really want to just have the experience be all women, right? Yeah. So we're, right. and again, this is open to any woman in leadership in any way she defines herself as a leader. That's right. In career, mid-career, CEO, it does not matter. The more breadth and experience that we have in the room, it means that, we're going to learn from each other. We're going to have lots of different experience and perspectives. And um, and we we also want to cap it That's right. at 20 participants because what's really important to us is that everybody feels like in the times that we're together in the room, and again, we're still kind of figuring out the details, an hour and a half, a couple hours, a half day, a full day. We still don't quite know that, but what's really important to us is that when we meet, that everybody has ample time to to be seen, to be heard, and to share. And so that's why we want to keep it. 20 is a great number yeah. because there's a nice range of experience, and it's small enough that people can really get individualized attention you know, from us and then in the group. Yeah, for right. sure. Absolutely. And so we're going to launch this in the fall, right? We're working with Shannon right now to figure out um, all, the details. All, the, all the details, <laughs> right? Yeah. So, um, and here's what we do know. So the next step that we are going to do is we're going to hold a two-hour here on site at the Women's Consortium in Hamden. We're going to do a two-hour Deeper dive, yes. right? So we've talked kind of all about what this program is about. And by then, I guarantee you that we will have all of the nitty-gritty details, right, Shannon? Oh, definitely. We will have it all figured out. Um, and so, and again, what we thought is here's the next step. So if you're interested, you want to come explore with us, we're, we will do some more experiential things along these topics. We'll mm -hmm. really give you a taste and a feel and and an I more of an idea of what will being part of a women's learning ship women's leadership experience with us and through the women's consortium what that will be like. That's right. And that's why we wanted to do it live. That's right. Right. Absolutely. And we're working right now with Shannon to get the um, continuing AI credits for it. Yeah. And we thought, you know, it's just, it's a nominal fee, hopefully $25 just so that, you know, you make that commitment, right? So you're showing up and, and you can register right on the women's consortium page for it. It's womensconsortium.org and it's, it's right. It will be right it there. It will be. It's not live it's not yet. There. It's not but live yet. Shortly. But okay. it will be there, right? right? So that's really how we envision the next step. It's two hours. And the other thing that's here is then, you know, the program, this two hours is $25. And we're still figuring out kind of, again, the length and the, and the pricing of what the whole experience will be, right? Whatever that is, if you come to that two hour and then you decide, oh, yeah, I'm in, I want to do the WLE, then your $25 is going to get credited towards that two hours. Yeah. Right. So it's really an it's an awesome yeah. it's an awesome uh, you know gift that the women's consortium has given everyone to do that. Yes. And you know again here's another one of our leaders, Indra. How do you say her last Indra name? Nuri. Nuri. Yep. Nuri. So right, PepsiCo, and mm -hmm. you know just an amazing CEO. And you know if you want to improve the organization, you have to improve yourself, and the organization gets pulled up with you. Yes. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. So we want to just, uh, you know, we're at just about 20 after, so we're going to wrap up, and we just want to open it up. So, again, if you have questions or thoughts or, you know, even if you want to just, it would be great if, you know, if you want to type in the Q&A, you know, would you be interested in kind of taking a next step with us or any, or would you be, you know, willing, we're probably going to maybe send out a little kind of survey or folks yeah. to the folks that were on the line here. We'd love to get your feedback. But yeah. just as we wrap up here, are there any questions or thoughts or comments we would 
really love to hear them. And then as, uh, you know, as you're thinking about that or doing that, you know, this is how you can reach out to Stacy and I. Mm -hmm. So you can, um, the first phone number on there is uh, hers and the second one is mine. And you can get to both of us at info at tls-llc.com or go to our website. And, you know, we would love to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. We'd love to answer questions. I'm sure, um, I guess I'll volunteer Shannon, but I'm, I, my, my guess is if you called the Women's Consortium, Shannon would probably talk to you about it a little bit. Too. I absolutely would. <laughs> <laughs> so just as, uh, as we finish up, um, Kathleen, if you want to just show our last slide. So again, if there's any comments or thoughts, we're still watching for them. But we just wanted to end with, with gratitude because mm. that's how we love to we start all of our own meetings and all of our own time together and we are constantly in a state of gratitude yes it's just really um it, it it's really important to just notice what is what is and what we have and and so um so christine is asking are you considering offering scholarships for this program it's a great question uh, this is Shannon. Uh, we have looked into some sources for funding. Um, there are not too many different uh, foundations that cover this particular type of program, but we are looking into it. Um, and certainly, if they do become available, we will make that announcement. Yes. And we're looking at different creative ways of how to put this at a price point that will be manageable for for everyone and, you know, whether it's maybe the organization supporting or um, I know Colette uh, might even have a little something up her sleeve about how the Women's Consortium might support. So we're working together right now to figure that out. Yeah, and again, we are. Come to come to our two-hour session on. Did I even say the date? On June 25th, mm -hmm. um, from 9 to 11, and we'll have all of the details then. So. Right. So thank you, everyone. Thank yeah. you, Stace. No, thank you, thank and you thanks enough. to the Women's Consortium. Thank you, thank you Kathleen. This is Kathleen, thanks for running all yeah, of the driving. technology. Carly, oh. thank you for the behind the scenes. <laughs> Shannon, thank you for working with us and really creating this. I mean, this is really exciting for us. I mean, I've been, like I said, blessed to be here, a presenter here at the Women's Consortium for a long time, and to do this in collaboration with you and to offer this kind of program in a different way in this community is just really a joy for me. So yeah, thank you. Exciting. And everyone that's on, that was on the call or that listens, thank you for really investing your time and trusting us it. that, you know, you hopefully you have taken something away and um, hopefully we'll see you on June Yeah. 25th. And any thoughts, questions, anything, please don't hesitate. Reach out. Reach out. Even if we don't know the answers, we'll get back to you as, as soon as we do. So. We sure will. Because you're very authentic like that. That's we, exactly right. We are indeed. We are glad to say we don't know, and we're glad to say when we know. That's so. exactly right. <laughs> That's exactly right. So thank you, everyone. Have thank a blessed you. day. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. So again, thank you so much, everyone, for joining today. And a big thank you to Alicia and Stacy for the really great and inspirational presentation today. So that concludes today's webinar, and thank you again, everyone, for joining, and we hope you have a great day.